All right, guys, this is for my class. And guys, if you are here to see how to make hooks on wires, you have come to the right spot. I have been showing my first year students how to make hooks on wires. Hooks are for your receptacles, so you can put the correct hook on each of your device, which a device is anything including switches, receptacles. We're going to show you real quick here how to strip the wire and then how to make a good hook with using your strip. Before we start, I want to say there's all types of different strippers. These are the ones that I have. I have many different ones back in that tool room right there. We're going to learn a little bit about strippers before we start making the video on how to do the curls. Now listen, if you don't want to watch what I'm going to tell you, timestamps will be down below so you can understand. These are informative videos. These are geared for my students and anybody that wants to watch this. So it's going to be a talking video. So if you don't like this, like I said, timestamps are down below. Some of the stuff people do not know, which I found out, some people didn't get taught the easiest way to do things. So I'm here to do that. I'm going to show you. We're going to talk about a set of strippers. Let's look at the strippers. This particular one, it starts at, if you look at all the little holes in it, it starts at 18 gauge, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, and 12 and 10. That is on the solid side. Solid wire is a solid piece of wire. It is what it says. The other side, this side here, it will strip stranded. It starts at 20. It goes to 18, 16, 14, and 12. One side of your strippers is stranded. One side of your strippers is solid. Also, you have these two holes right under my fingernails. Do you see them? That is where you make your hooks at. I can't believe how many people, not my students, but just people in general, electricians, did not know that those two holes were for that reason right there. I have literally shown apprentice after apprentice and even electricians. Believe it or not, that's where the hooks are. I would see people using the ends of your pliers or strippers to make hooks, which is fine. But that is not the easiest way to go. And I will show you how to do that. Secondly, there's two more holes right here. One says 632, one says 832. Those are for cutters. You can screw cut. When you screw a screw in here, which we will not do on this video, you need to hold your strippers or your bolt cutters or whatever you're using so you can see what it says. If you do it the opposite way, you will screw your strippers up or your bolt cutters or whatever you're using. It's important. My first year students right now, especially, I let you guys go and I watched you strip wires. And um, I noticed that you weren't really looking at the difference on the numbers. This is important, guys. You got to keep in mind that these numbers mean something. All right. Remember what I told you. If you have a yellow piece of Romex, that is 12 gauge wire. A white piece of Romex nowadays is 14 gauge wire. In this setting right here, they are color specific. If you go to a home, an older home, 90s, 80s, you could have a 10 gauge wire with a white sheath on it. It happened years ago. They make it so much easier now for not only electricians, homeowners, and inspectors, but for every single person out there so they can distinguish what they have. Keep in mind, when you are using strippers, if you are using 14 gauge wire, you need to keep it on the 14 gauge solid side. That's very important because if you do not, you risk the potential to damage your wire. And what does that mean? If you go to twist your um, wires together, they're going to snap. So let's bring you down here on this table. I'm going to show you how to strip the easiest way and to make a hook and then we'll put it on a device. All right. One thing I do not let my students do is I do not let them use a drill or an impact to tighten up device screws. I will not allow that in my class. However, I will allow a screwdriver of this nature right here or of this nature right here, either one. All right, this is a low speed device. Also, it will not strip the screws because it's 
doesn't have as much force as an impact or a drill. You will not, well, you can still run the potential of stripping these out, but it's very unlikely. So I don't mind them using this. If you guys are interested in a screwdriver of this nature, I will leave a link down below. I love this screwdriver put in devices. There's other ones that you can buy, but for the price of this, it's amazing. So links will be down below if you want to purchase this. Also, this right here uh, does not come with it. This is a magnet. So if you have a screw you need to keep on, you know, you don't want to lose it, you slide that to the front like that, and you will not lose that screw whatsoever. That one's made by Milwaukee. I'll leave a link down below to that too. I just leave it on there because a lot of the times I need it to hold a screw on, whether it be a 632, which is in a device, or an A32, which is in a box. All right, let's get to stripping. All right, first thing you wanna do is you wanna verify you know what you're using. We know, I know this is 12. I can feel the wire until this is a 12 gauge wire. Eventually, you will be able to do exactly the same thing. We're gonna find 12 gauge right here. It's easy just to know that you know the biggest solid wire size is 10. So if you're using 12, it's just the next hole up. So we're gonna put it in here like this, all right? If you don't know how long to strip these, that's gonna be almost perfect. But if you do not know how long to strip your wires, if you look on the back of your device right here, you will see something called a strip gauge. I hope it's coming on the camera. If not, please ask. But you will see a strip gauge. Not all devices are in the same spot, but it says a strip gauge. What you will do is you will take your wire and you will butt it up against there. You will put your finger right there and that would be what you need to do to strip it out. Any less than that, you risk the potential of the insulation being on your screw. You do not want that whatsoever. Now, you can make it a little longer, but you don't want to have, you do not want to have your insulation or your copper too far out. Now, after you get your wire in there, squeeze it, put your thumb right here, and use your thumb to push, right? See how close my hand is to my stripper? Just push, boom, comes right off, let it go. All right, try it again. We're gonna put it in because we know that 12 gauge is a second hole up. All right, I'm gonna squeeze it. And I'm gonna put my thumb really close to here and I'm gonna push it off. That easy. All right, when you go to make your curls, all you need to do is put the end of your wire, the very end of your wire right here, just barely through your hole like that, all right? And you wanna put it in so your wire is just hanging out like that much right there. Can you see that? It's barely hanging out. See the copper on this side here? It's barely hanging out. And then you wanna, you wanna bend it away from you. So you're gonna use this hole right here, and then you're gonna bend it. You wanna hold it tight. You wanna make this tight, so you wanna push, as you're pushing this way towards the floor, you wanna be able to push the clines back to you, the strippers, because you wanna make that hook very, very, very tight. You don't wanna make a hook that looks anything like this right here, because if you do, I'll show you why. We're gonna use the white wire as a guinea pig, all right? If you make a big loop, this is what's gonna happen. If you go to put your hook on a device, you see how open it is? It's too, it's too big. Now, the one that I made on the black wire, it fits in there very snugly. Snugly, keep that in mind, that's a word. Today, it's a word. All right, so same thing. You're gonna push away from you. You're gonna use the bottom hole, hold them like this. You're gonna put them away from you. You're gonna push the wire just a little bit in there. And then as you're turning, you're also pulling back. So you're turning, pulling back, turning, pulling back. That way it keeps this wire and this loop extremely tight. And your loop is very good and tight. So I'm very, very, very strongly pulling it back at the same time. All right, let's put them on and see what happens. All right, we know that the black is on there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tighten it down. Keep in mind, this will only tighten down a little bit. You'll have to tighten it down more because that is not tight enough. 
as my students know, if they're watching this, they know that I go back and I check their devices. You can see, I can still get, I can still get more on it. That is the correct tightness. Do you see right here? Look at the insulation where it ends and where the copper starts. It is not compromised at all. It is where it needs to be. The hook is perfect and the insulation is not under the screw. It's extremely important that you guys understand exactly how to do that hook. This is the fundamentals and you keep that tight. You can tighten this down if you so choose. There's no reason to tighten it. There's no reason not to tighten it. If you just feel like you want to tighten it, tighten it up. I have no issues leaving it out. It's up to you. All right, same thing goes for the neutral. We will put it under here, like so. All right. Now, this is, this is the one that I was screwed around with. So you see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ends of my pliers here, strippers, and I'm going to take and I'm going to squeeze it just ever so slightly. All right. And we're going to put this on and tighten it down. Now, when you're tightening down, you want to pull the, pull the hook away from the screw so it stays on tight because you don't want, you don't want it to look like this after you're said and done because that is not a good connection. So you want it to be tight. So we're going to pull it away from there. And once again, we're going to give it a snug. All right. As you see, that looks almost perfect. The insulation is just right at the screw. Not compromised in any way. All right, and then the ground too. So once again, let's start out one more time. All right, we're gonna strip it out. Now, you can strip a little longer if you want to. Just strip, push and strip, push and strip, all right? That one's longer. You don't want them too long because I'm gonna show you right here why you don't want them too long. Now see how I made that hook? I made it in a big, big way. So let's strip this one out a little bit more and I'll make this one a little tight. All right, you do not want your wire to look like this after you put it on. That's actually not too bad, but you don't want too much copper past this receptacle. So this is not too bad, actually. This one's perfect. This one is perfect because the insulation is hidden inside this device end right here. There's no chance of a wire touching it, and if it does, it's not gonna, it's not gonna short out. This one, if this was a hot, it potentially could short out. See how much copper shown? Same with this one. All right, this one's good. So keep in mind when you're making hooks, don't make them too long. Practice, practice makes perfect. That's why we're here. If you need to come to this table, and you need to, or your table, wherever you're at at home, practice, 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 practice. It only takes a few minutes to practice every day, and then you'll be almost perfect every time. It's very important. All right, I hope that helped. Remember, you do not want the insulation up under your screw. That can cause very bad things later on down the road. You can, uh, eventually will loosen up. You will have your insulation, uh, charred. I've showed you pictures where it's a little uh, discolored. All right. You can't get that correct tightness on there. You've got to make sure that you keep the copper in touch with every part of that screw as you can, because you do not want it to get loose ever, because that causes fire. Loose connections cause fire, guys. All right. I'm going to leave it here. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you want to see how to make the perfect wire joint, check right here, guys. It'll be coming up. I'm going to be doing a new updated video on that also. So be on the watch out for that. If you like what you see, like and subscribe. God bless. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great day.